Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, 4th Cessna Citation Longitude propels program towards certification. Parrot creates new division after major layoffs. Update Zero Restoration to Look Armed. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. It's May 11th and this is Airborne Unlimited. Textron Aviation has added its fourth super mid-sized Cessna Citation Longitude to the flight test fleet, propelling the program toward anticipated FAA type certification later this year. The aircraft is outfitted with a fully configured interior. The fourth longitude took to the skies for the first time on Saturday, May 6, from the company's beach field in East Wichita. Textron Aviation test pilots Andrew Peters and Brian Gigax took the aircraft to full envelope during the 3-hour and 20-minute flight and the aircraft reached all of its performance targets. With four aircraft now flying in the longitude test program in less than eight months, we are demonstrating that our product development processes and teams are second to none in the industry, said Brad Thress, Senior Vice President of Engineering. In addition to further systems testing, this fourth aircraft allows us to evaluate the overall passenger experience, which is just as vital as the performance and technology in the cockpit. The first Citation Longitude flew in October 2016, and to date, the flight test program has completed more than 200 flights, accumulating nearly 400 hours. Parrot has opened up a new division it hopes will fill a segment of the market between their top-end commercial aircraft and its hobby store drones. Parrot calls the new line Parrot Professional. The aircraft will be more in the price category as popular models from DJI and Unique. Parrot says they are built on Parrot's consumer drones but targeted for use by small to medium-sized businesses. Parrot says it has identified commercial activities where its drones can focus on providing efficiency and knowledge to save time, perform better, and generate more revenue. They specifically mention agriculture, construction, and real estate as potential businesses that might employ one of its professional line of UAVs. Parrot is unveiling three new aircraft in its prosumer line. The Disco Pro AG will cost $4,500 and is expected to be available in June. The lower-cost Bebop Pro 3D will set you back about $1,100. The third model, called Bebop Pro Thermal, will carry a thermal camera. The price for that aircraft has not been disclosed. Parrot announced the layoff of about 300 people earlier this year, which is about a third of its entire drone staff. At the same time, it said it was reorganizing the company with more of a focus on commercial applications. After the break, a Japanese Zero gets restored. Let Patrick Neal & Associates provide the legal expertise needed to navigate the commercial UAS industry. Whether it be waivers, exemptions, operational plans, or other issues, we can provide the guidance you need to keep flying and building your successful UAS operation. www.droneattorneys.us Continental Motors Group. Manned and unmanned, Continental has been a pivotal part of aviation and aerospace history and wants to be a part of your mission. Gas or diesel, certified or experimental, Continental is investing in your future. www.continentalmotors.aero In collaboration with NASC, introducing Sonics Aerospace, bringing you the Taros Group 4 UAS, the redesigned Tiger Shark Block 4, and the Subsonics Twin Jet UAS, all derived from flight-proven manned systems, not concepts, real aircraft. More at sonicsaerospace.com There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. A Japanese A6M20 being renovated by Air Corps Aviation for its museum is reportedly coming along nicely. In a post on the blog texasflyinglegends.org, Jake Peterson writes that the rear fuselage is looking good, with restorers making sure that the outer skin will fit the framework before permanently affixing the skin. The vertical and horizontal stabilizers are also nearing completion. 
But to make the aircraft look even more realistic, two mock-up Type 97 aircraft machine guns will be installed just forward of the cockpit. In a project update posted online, Air Corps Aviation wrote, The Model 21 mounted two of the Type 97 aircraft machine guns in the top of the fuselage, just in front of the pilot, with the receivers and all but a little of the muzzle end of the guns fared over. Slots in the cow run forward for bullet clearance. This Japanese designation signified a license-built version of the Vickers E model machine gun. There was a Type 97 light machine gun used by the ground troops, but that was a completely different machine gun. Naturally, since the FAA distinctively prefers that one doesn't fly with functioning machine guns, these are inoperative replicas. After these messages, new Hartzell propeller approval for Piper M600. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115 horsepower turbocharged airplane at AirplaneFactory.com. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The FAA has approved the installation of Hartzell Propeller's new 5-blade composite swept tip propeller on the Piper M600 turboprop aircraft. This propeller was designed specifically for the Piper M600. It features thin maximum efficiency airfoils providing increased performance and outstanding ramp appeal. The durability of the new Hartzell Propeller reportedly integrates nicely with the Piper M600 and enhances the aircraft's reliability characteristics. A white paper has reported that China is the world's largest generator of outbound travel, with more than 120 million Chinese visiting international destinations in 2016. This still represents less than 10 percent of the population. The majority of inbound and outbound travel is undertaken by air, with 150 airlines providing international services from 82 Chinese airports, operating 800,000 flights annually. A number of federal and local officials have written to the FAA requesting they measure noise levels from flights from DCA. The officials request a timeline by June 5, 2017 of its review of the impact of changes made to air traffic patterns in 2015. Our constituents daily suffered the disruptive and unhealthy effects of the implementation of the flight procedure changes, they wrote. An Air Force Academy cadet was killed in a skydiving accident Sunday. Cadet Caleb Estes was fatally injured when he made a hard landing in a field in Calhan after a jump with out-of-the-blue skydiving. A reserve parachute was found with the cadet's body, but the primary parachute was not found and may have been a cutaway, suggesting a malfunctioning main canopy. Estes was an experienced skydiver with more than 500 jumps. AMA and Alaris LLC, creators of Alaris Pro UAS fleet management software, have teamed together with a common commitment to developing and promoting tools that improve the safety of UAS operations. To signify their commitment to this important relationship, Alaris is offering a 40% discount to AMA members on the company's Alaris Pro Edge plan. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. The ADSB 2020 mandate may finally be sinking in with flyers. With 27 avionics satellite shops and workaway stations located at busy airports around the United States, Duncan Aviation is in a unique position to perform ADSB upgrades for its business aviation customers ahead of the FAA's midnight deadline on December 31, 2019. 
In the first quarter of 2017, Duncan Aviation and its satellite shops have completed 47 ADSB installations and have an additional 51 scheduled for the second quarter. As a result of the recent comments by the FAA's Acting Deputy Administrator, Victoria Wasmer, Duncan Aviation has seen an uptick in the number of ADSB upgrades scheduled for the third and fourth quarters of 2017. In mid-April 2017 at Sun and Fun International Fly-In and Expo in Lakeland, Florida, the FAA's Wasmer reiterated that the mandate deadline for automatic dependent surveillance broadcast is firm. I'm going to say this as plainly as I can. The ADSB equipage deadline is not changing, says Wasmer. If you plan to fly your plane in most controlled airspace after December 31, 2019, you're going to need to install ADSB. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. See you tomorrow.